high. Of course, this is one module that could easily stretch to 10 years long, but I just wanted to flag up a couple of instances that are of particular interest to you as the no budgeter. The first is the Polish cinema of the 60s and 70s, the work of directors like Holland, of Kozlowski and Wodzia. Look into them if you aren't familiar. It's all online in easily digestible chunks if that's how you need it, but I'm just putting them out there as a starter. Then there's the French New Wave, Jean-Luc Godard et al. And lastly, the Danish Dogme 95 movement of 1995. What all of these dealt with, essentially, was a restriction to available resources and or censorship. Sometimes by choice, sometimes not. But of particular note in this conversation are the Danish filmmakers Lars von Trier, Christian Levering, Soren Krag Jakobsen and Thomas Vinterberg. My apologies for my pronunciation. These were the creators of Dogme 95. What they did was restrict themselves on purpose because that then forced them to think differently to come up with unusual and interesting solutions to the problems they put themselves in. There were a lot of rules to Dogme, but some of the key ones were that the film had to be shot handheld on digital cameras. No tripods or dollies. Then no props, no sets and no artificial lighting. All the action would have to take place in the now. There was no music, soundtrack allowed, unless it naturally occurred within the scene with someone playing a piano or a radio one in the background. There were quite a few other rules, but these ones in particular are interesting to us because you can already begin to see how far from restricting the filmmaker, they freed them up. They were no longer worrying about the cost of a composer or an orchestra, of a Panavision lighting truck and the consequent parking permits, weighty, expensive camera, dolly, lamps, electricians, grips, focus pullers, all gone. Think about that. I mean, at the time, it was really revolutionary, flying in the face of the prevailing mode of thinking. And what it forced these filmmakers to do was go back to the story, what made a good, compelling story? Because they wouldn't be able to hide behind a marvellous set piece or a swooping camera or swelling orchestra to boost the emotion, the message. It simply had to be really rigorous storytelling. And some massive, seminal, influential movies came out of it, like Festen, Italian for Beginners, and The Idiots. But they also opened the scheme up to all and filmmakers from around the world made movies that they then submitted for Dogme certification to verify they complied fully to the rules. For 10 years, it really put Danish film on the map and obviously launched a few careers to boot. But what's also interesting is that what that then spawned as filmmakers started to really grasp what digital cameras opened up for them. Director Sean Baker spoke about making his hit film Tangerine, famously shot on an iPhone, precisely because he was inspired by the Dogme 95 movement. I don't want to dive into a whole history of film class. I'm sure some of you out there already are perfectly acquainted with everything that I've just said, but I do want you to understand that the foundations are already out there and that you can dip into all of these movements. The thinking and actions of great directors who have gone before and grab what's useful to you in your situation standing on the shoulders of giants. Even Shakespeare borrowed stories left and right. That's well documented. Look, if you have access to the latest top end kit, then by all means use it. I'm not telling you to ignore that in favour of your iPhone, but I am saying that with a little thought as either writer or director or both, you could begin to see from dog me if nothing else, with a little thought, the restrictions you face can in fact be possibilities, you know? What's evident is when restrictions are imposed, be they ideological or practical, it forces the filmmaker to look deeper for a solution, either reaching some sort of allegory that can bypass any flat-footed unimaginative senses and yet still impart a great salient idea in a way viewers haven't seen before, like the great Polish and Russian filmmakers, or simply work around a lack of high-end, all-singing, all-dancing, professional kit. Of course, it's all getting so much easier with the progression of digital soft and hardware, but this central concept is still valid. 
Work out what you have, what you have access to, and then work within those parameters. Don't see them as insurmountable brick walls. Use them to your advantage. And that's one of the crucial keys to all of this is just to take what's useful to you in this course. Whatever is directly of use or whatever sparks an idea in you, take it and use it and discard the rest. Travel light. Not everything here is going to apply to all of you. So if it interests you to do so, and if you aren't familiar already, take a deeper look at the likes of Godar, of Wadya, at the Dogmi movement. My second major lesson here is, and I don't want to talk in absolutes, I'm not interested in telling you what to derive from what, but I do think that watching stuff with different goggles on is also very helpful. Watch the making of extras on DVDs or online of films or directors that inspire you. Then watch the film again, knowing what you now know. Watch one of your favourite films with the sound off. This can be really helpful. If you have seen a film many times, it's still hard to watch it and not get drawn into the drama, if it's any good. I don't care if it's Star Wars, Back to the Future, Apu or Kurosawa. Try masters like David Lean or Stanley Kubrick. What you will do immediately is start to view it entirely visually, obviously. How the story is told solely from a camera perspective, the shot size, the lens, the content, the frame, the camera moves, the composition. No sound helps remove the noise, as it were, but also from you getting sucked in. And it allows you to really focus on what the director and DOP did just with the camera. Invaluable. But not only that. It will then make you really appreciate sound and quite how much it brings to the party. It's a classic rule of filmmaking that you never show your film as a rough cut to anyone without a proper sound mix because poor sound affects what the viewer thinks they are seeing and they'll judge you more harshly than they ever will with when the sound is sorted. Take note. Watching a film like Grease with the sound down you really begin to see how ropey, how cheap some of the shots really are, but then the performances, the energy and the sound really make up for it. And just look how successful that film is. I'm a film nutcase, so sometimes on a long haul flight, I'm content to watch the film being viewed by the passenger diagonally in front of me without the sound through the gap in the seats, just the image, to see how much of it comes across, how well it's been shot. But like I said, I am a nutter. Thank you.